Well, hello. I'm Wendy Burton. I'm a GP from Brisbane, and I'm here with my colleague, Dr. Pam Douglas, who's also a GP at Brisbane, and we're going to talk today about tongue tie. So Pam, oh my goodness, it's early 2019. Tongue tie has been a thing, is a thing, it's a real thing. Uh, it's been known about for multiple generations. For me, uh, the classic would be uh, perhaps reviewing uh, a, a new mother with her baby at perhaps that five to ten day mark and she's concerned the breasts are hurting there's some pain with the initiation of the breastfeeding she's worried that her baby's not getting enough milk uh, the baby's crying she's not sure about the weight gain and somebody has already placed in her mind that perhaps um, this child has a tongue tie or has out and out said to her that they have a tongue tie when I think tongue tie I think about that membrane of tissue underneath the tongue that attaches the tongue to the floor of the mouth. And I think if that is too thick or too long, then the tongue can't actually move out past the lips. And that it'll tether, it'll start to take a little heart shape, and that that might give problems for sweeping debris off teeth once they've established, not now newborns, um, or might give articulation problems with speech so the sounds where we need to move the tongue out and you know licking ice creams and important things you can't go through life without you being able to lick I ice know, cream. I know. <laughs> so so i am naturally concerned if there is indeed tethering of the tongue that limits its movement in a way that would compromise that child either with breastfeeding with dental care with speech or with the pleasures of life such as looking ice cream and tongue tie is it underdiagnosed is it overdiagnosed are we not recognizing it are we calling normal abnormal Pam help of course there is a classic tongue tie so um, presumably from the beginning of time some of our babies small percent we don't really know the percentage but maybe two percent to three percent of um, human infants have been born with a membrane under the tongue that impacted on tongue mobility. And again, it would seem to be across cultures and perhaps from the beginning of time that um, membrane was cut if um, the impact on tongue mobility affected breastfeeding. Um, but we have seen um, a serious problem with overdiagnosis and overtreatment of our baby's oral connective tissues, um, really from 2005. Um, so I guess what has happened is that through the uh, 50s, 60s, 70s, when um, there was a, a terrible um, social breakdown really in breastfeeding. Um, our own profession um, began to say quite forcefully that, that um, tongue tie didn't exist. And it's absolutely true that until the last decade or so, many of our breastfeeding infants were unable to um, continue on in a breastfeeding relationship with their mother because tongue tie wasn't being um, picked up, a classic tongue tie wasn't being um, picked up and, um, and cut with a phrenotomy. Pam, what do you say to parents? And this is when they come in concerned about mm -hmm. the tongue tie. Yes, yeah, so you have an opportunity yeah. before the deed is done to talk to them about the diagnosis yes. of a tongue tie yes. and whether or not to proceed with a posterior tie release uh, or a lip tie release. Yes. Yes. Uh, what do you say? So um, I'll listen first of all yes. and take that thorough history mm -hmm. um, and including a, a thorough breastfeeding history. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll then move into um, an examination. Mm -hmm. uh, the way I sequence this will vary according to the case, but I may then move into a breastfeeding assessment mm -hmm. and just 
have a look. If the woman hasn't already been feeding the baby, I have opportunity mm -hmm. to have a look at just how she is um, uh, going about the breastfeeding, mm -hmm. or how she and the bubby are going about the breastfeeding. So I've done my assessment, and then, and then we'll we'll pause. We'll we'll um, discuss what I think is going on, and um, and so most typically it involves reassuring parents that what I'm seeing mm -hmm. um, in terms of oral connective tissue is absolutely normal anatomic um, variation but I I will acknowledge how confusing this is for parents and how much conflicting input they're getting um, I, I may um, depending on the consultation call on what I know of the research mm -hmm. um, what is it that you would say to that desperate mother who doesn't actually give a rip about the history, doesn't want to know about he said, she said, or what the research or the guidelines say, just wants to know what they're going to do with their baby, with themselves, now, tonight, tomorrow, the appointment's booked to have the lasering done. What's your opinion? What do you say to her? Well, it's so upsetting when we strike breastfeeding difficulties like this. It um, just, uh, really goes to the, the heart of what we've been wanting to offer as mothers. It's quite primal, isn't it? Mm. 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 No, it's... it's um, mm. um, and the truth is um, understanding how to help with these breastfeeding problems so the nipple pain the difficulty coming on fussing pulling off at the breast marathon feeds excessive feeds it's this is still a frontier we're still pioneering around this and and that's why there's been this real trend to over medicalizing, to thinking, okay, let's just cut these oral connective tissues. But unless there's a, a classic tongue tie, it's absolutely clear that these phrenotomies, particularly the, the laser phrenotomies, um, are not going to help. So what we have to do is look together at what's causing these problems and it's it's around the way the baby fits into a woman's body so when I'm seeing families who've, who've um, come to me for second opinions or indeed come to me after um, they've had the laser phrenotomy I'm seeing um, breast tissue drag um, when the baby's breastfeeding I'm seeing positional instability I'm seeing problems that we can actually deal with if we look at the new biomechanical model of infant suck um, arising out of ultrasound studies in which we're calling the Gestalt model. Um, so I would be asking you to give the Gestalt breastfeeding a go. You can look at the online self-help program. Um, you might go and talk to a lactation consultant who's familiar with this work. Um, but I'd invite you to give Gestalt breastfeeding a go before um, you actually go down the track of um, laser phrenotomy or deep tissue phrenotomy. In summary, tongue tie has both been historically underdiagnosed and is currently being overdiagnosed. The research is indicating that lip ties, buckle ties, and posterior tongue ties are just variations of normal and that we are doing more harm than good when we intervene and we cut or we laser these areas. The research is also indicating that we have misunderstood how breastfeeding actually works and that a lot of the reasons why babies are recommended to have this tissue cut has to do not with anything to do with the tissue of their tongue but it has to do with how they fit and hold how stable they are at the breast, how well that breast tissue is sitting inside that little mouth, 
and that there are programs and techniques in ways that you can breastfeed better that will save you A, a ton of money, but B, from actually hurting your baby with the cutting or the lasering. The one exception is the very classic tongue tie. There is definitely still a role for that in breastfeeding difficulties. But if your child has a little heart shaped tongue and it is doing just great with its feeding and weight gain, oh please be chilled. That is fine and that tongue will be able to lick an ice cream. Yeah? All right, Pam, thank you very much. My pleasure.